All right, so how much fun do you think we can have? I've got, I want to find the surface area of an open cone, all right? So what I mean by an open cone, it's gonna be something like this, right? Oh, that's my y-axis, that's my z-axis, that's some other axis, right? And uh, so an open cone is just sort of open at the top, like that, right? See that, that's open. You can put stuff in this cone. Oh, well, you maybe you don't see it because they didn't put the rest of the cone in there. So I've got, got the cone in there, right? And that's going to have some height H and some radius R, right? And maybe I can put a shadow over there, a little shadow here, a little shadow in there, make it come to life, right? Do a little bit of Bob Ross stuff on your cone, right? Because, you know, you might, might want to put ice cream in there. All right. So, um... I want that open cone. I don't care about this um, top there. If you want to do the top, that's fine. You can add it, right? You, you know what the what the area of a circle is. You just add it in, right? It's not an issue. Um, so let's categorize the stuff that I'm want to. I've got to play with, right? I've got a conical surface. Take some inventory here, and I said I uh, I forgot a cone. It's got to have a height and a radius, right? I've already named those H and R. And there's not really anything else that I need from that that guy there. And all I want to do now is I want to find um, its area, right? And we'll call that S because we're awesome, right? We're able to call the area something with an S, like a seria. All right, so now we want to draw the object like I already did because I tend to draw the object before I do anything else. And then I want it, want to write the limits, right? I draw the object so I have some idea about the limits, right? That's what I really care about is how am I going to write this, right? I've got a cone, you know, Mr. Cone, he goes Z equals what? Um, at the height h, uh, or at the radius r, it, this is going to have a height h. So z over r times the square root of x squared plus y squared, right? So, or, no, no, it's, it's actually absolutely correct. So that's what's going to give me that z guy, right? Um, you know, that completely constrains this thing, all right? Uh, what else do I need to know? Well. If this is my function z, then probably what I'm going to have to do, I mean, I could do it in one of these other planes if I wanted to, but not necessarily. Um, so what can I do? I can try to just take this projection, right, and use that. So let's say I just start with x and say x is going to go from uh, minus r to r, right? Well, then I do y at a particular x, right? And so that means, you know, y only has so much left because it's a circle, right? And so it has to be between minus um, the square root of r squared minus x squared to, you know, the square root of r squared minus x squared, all that's left for y, so that it can um, get wherever it wants to go, right? So that's pretty good. Um, next, we want to find that differential element. Right. Right, so ds is going to equal some s times dx dy, or dy dx. Uh, we're going to have to integrate y first, because that's in terms of x. Um, and that s is equal to the square root of 1 plus um, the square dz dx of dz dx plus the square of dz dy, just like that, right? So that's going to tell me how big each little tiny box that I'm adding up here is, right? So I'm, I want to figure out how big each one of those boxes is, and it's allowed to change. It doesn't necessarily change, but it's allowed to change at different points on the um, surface. Uh, let's see, 
that's equal to something because I haven't found yet what dzdx is or what dzdy is. And dzdx is, um, well, h over r, right, because that doesn't do much of anything. And then the square root of x squared plus y squared, the first part of that is one half times 1 over the square root of x squared plus y squared, and then I multiply, then I take the derivative of the interior with respect to x, which is 2x, but I had a 1 half, the 2 cancels, and I just have an x left. You've seen that before. So if you don't understand what I did, do it yourself, right? And then you will be happy because you understand things like that. Um, the more work you do yourself, the more you understand things. So I, I am trying very hard not to be sarcastic because even if I, even though I would believe what I said, it might come off wrong. So, right. Um, and that little bit of worry made me forget what it was I was going to say anyway, which is even worse. So. I might end up saying it because I don't remember what it was. I was just about to say it. It's bad. I'm ba it, I'm getting old. I'm an old old man. Old old man. Brr. All right. Okay. So when I add these guys together, I've got an x squared plus a y squared. Each one of those is divided by x squared plus y squared. So that guy's one. So really, I have just this h squared over r squared. And my common practice here would be to pull over, pull out that um, 1 over r squared so that I have 1 over r times the square root of r squared plus h squared, or h squared plus r squared, it doesn't really matter. Um, that's just my general practice is trying to, trying to make that stuff under the radical as uh, pretty as possible, you know, because I'm going to be playing around with it in just a minute, minute and I don't want it getting all weird. Math can get weird. You don't want funky math. You want nice, fresh math. You know, it smells like roses. All right, so I'm going to write some integral. And uh, that integral is going to be for this s, which is going to be the double integral over that region, right, with respect to s. Um, and basically what I've already said is that I want to go from minus r to r and from minus the square root of r squared minus x squared to the square root of r squared minus x squared. Right? Um, let's see what else do I want to do. I want to shove this guy in here, right, which is 1 over r square root of r squared plus h squared times the rest of that thing, which is the dy and the dx. Okay, but this is all a big constant, so that comes out. And don't forget to keep the radical. The radical stays with that stuff, and I'm only saying that because last time I tried to do this, got all the way through, and then I noticed that I sort of left that off, and then I left another thing off, and things got funky, because math gets funky. So, um, now I can do this integral on y, because there's nothing in, in there to do anything with, so it's just whatever this is. So I've got a 2 times the square root of r squared minus x squared in here, um, dx. And what should I do? I'll just, well, how much room do I have? I've got some room. All right, move it up a little. All right, so if I cut this in half, because this is symmetric over x, I'll just go 0 to r, and I pull out that 2, I have 4 over r here. Um, um, let's see, what other good things do I put in there? 4 over r, square root of r squared plus h squared, and then the thing that could get me in trouble if I wanted it to which is the square root of r squared minus x squared, dx. And I am not going to try to do that one in my brain. 
Instead, I will look it up. And yeah, so that is going to be something on the order of, oh, not an equals. That's going to be something on the orders, order of one half arc tangent, I believe. Yeah, okay, one half r squared arc tangent of, Uh, well, we've got two bit, two bits here. It doesn't really matter. Matter the um, one that gets us something useful is going to be uh, r over zero. Right, that r over zero is going to give us um, a pi over two. Right, and so because of that pi over two, we have four over r. Um, times r squared over 4 times pi times the square root of r squared plus h squared. And so this guy is canceled, this guy cancels that. So we have pi r times the square root of r squared plus h squared, which is what you were hoping to find. And you know, you could do this in a much more um, heuristic way, right? You can just say, well, you know, how am I going to get get this um, get this thing? Well, all you have to do is you have to find the, the uh, length of this guy and sweep it around like that, right? So you find this length which is the square root of r squared plus h squared, right? Because this is h, this is r. And then, you know, to swing around here, you swing around with your um, integral, which is integrating this around, which is r times um, whatever, and you end up with a pi out here and you're happy. So that's another way to do it. Um, it's not difficult, but the point of doing this isn't that, you know, this is the most difficult problem. The point of it is to show you something that you actually have to worry about this little differential element coming out of this guy. Um, but it's also simple enough that it doesn't, you know, take uh, 60 minutes or 70 minutes or whatever to do while I'm talking. And it all takes longer while I'm talking, that's just a rule. Um, but still, that's the way these things happen. Anyways, thank you very much for listening. I hope you had a great time watching me uh, move these symbols around. Um, if you did, then you can watch some more of these things and see me move more symbols. It's all a lot of fun. All right, see you around. Bye now.